This video is number eight in a series of 20 that will help you figure out what's going on with your fish. And my name is Eric Johnson. I'm a veterinarian in Marietta, Georgia with a specialty in fish health and dogs and cats. And we have been covering um, the initial considerations for fish disease so that you people don't go too far down the road treating a parasite when, in fact, there's other issues in play like a crashed-out pH, which happens all the time. So frustrating that when the fish are sick, people will start using fish medicines and stuff without realizing that it's a water quality problem because they never tested for that. So I'm bringing it back around to get people to test their water, and we've covered that in steps one through seven. So... In step number eight, I want you to assess oxygenation. It's a huge thing, and you could miss it so easily. So let's look at it. that. A symptom of low dissolved oxygen, for example, would be fish that are gasping at the surface. Well, sure, because there's not enough oxygen in the water, but it goes worse than that because if, let's say that there's a parasite chewing on the fish and destroying their gill tissue or say the ammonia levels have gotten very high and it's burned the gill tissue how do you know that there's oxygen in the water to be breathed versus the gills just not being able to breathe well you don't so you have to assess these things so once you've established that water quality is pretty good then you don't have to worry about those issues burning the gills and you're closing in, if everything's been okay, you're closing in on a possible parasite issue. But another cause of gasping is a low dissolved oxygen. So let's talk about that. Gasping at the surface, possibly because of a low dissolved oxygen. What do you need to know? Well, first, there is an um, uh, oxygen test. You can actually get them. Uh, Amazon.com, look up oxygen test. The problem is there aren't really any of those tests that are particularly easy to run. Uh, the most accurate tests for oxygen come from a company called HACH, H-A-C-H. H -A -C -H. Uh, it's an aquacultural test kit company. They make an amazing test kit, pretty good oxygen test kit, but it's not easy to run. So I'm not 100% sure that testing for dissolved oxygen is the best thing, as much as I'm sure that optimizing oxygenation is specifically if you have sick fish, under what circumstances would it be a problem to increase oxygenation? Never. So putting an air stone into any situation where fish are sick, increasing aeration, water turnover, good idea. Did you know that warm water carries less oxygen? So if your fish are having damage to the gills from water quality or parasites, and the water's on the warm side, they're not going to have as good a time, not get as much oxygen or be able to breathe as well as if the water was a little bit cooler. So sometimes in, for example, shotgun care, the idea of doing a 50% water change to kick off any treatment is helpful because it cools the water down a little bit, increases its ability to carry oxygen to the damaged gills. So that's a, a, a consideration of warm water. Fish with gill problems in very warm water are very, very threatened because they can't, can't breathe in water that's not carrying uh, very much oxygen. In the middle of winter, you don't even need a, a air stone or, or water turnover because in very cold water, oxygen saturates. So increasing aeration is a pretty good way to go. Can you tell by looking at a pond outside whether or not the oxygenation is good? Uh, the answer is yes and no, as is the answer with just about every question ever asked. If you have a waterfall running and the water is moderate in temperature, the odds are very good that the oxygen levels are okay. If you don't have a waterfall running and the water temperatures are very high, there's a real good chance you're going to have a problem with oxygen. Um, in order to have a pond or an or outdoor system that you can feel comfortable with, I recommend having water movement in the form of a waterfall. Uh, air stone, that's an air pump attached to a tube, attached to a um, 
uh, air stone, you know, you've seen them. You drop them in the water, and the diffuser sends up a screen of bubbles. It turns over the water pretty good and gets oxygen mixed in there uh, fairly well. And then uh, even fluming, which is taking a electric pump, like a submersible water pump, and uh, directing it at the surface so it creates a flume of water uh, which exchanges oxygen at the surface of the system. Um, air stones in fish tanks, good idea. Running uh, external filtration or in some way disturbing the water surface. If there's a skin on the surface of the, of the pond, uh, very, very good chance that oxygen exchange isn't happening to a su sufficient level. So I guess what I'm saying is in consideration of this eighth step, in the assessment of a fish disease outbreak, the eighth step is to figure out whether or not the tank or the pond is adequately aerated. And rather than try a laborious or difficult or expensive test for, ammon uh, for oxygen in that situ situation, my recommendation would be just to ensure or optimize oxygenation with an air stone or some other means of turning the water over and possibly cooling it. So in a nutshell, let's check out our oxygen levels and ensure that they are the best. Which, before closing, brings me to my next point, and that is in quarantine systems, you can't have too much oxygen unless it's rolling the fish around. They always have to be able to sleep and get rest and be away from a current, but it's a good idea in quarantines to have uh, very abundant oxygen levels. Um, well, let's move on to step nine. 